Good afternoon, dear chairman, distinguished colleagues and guests. I'd like to thank Professor Peric and Professor Jovancevic for inviting me to be a part of this symposium and at the same time congratulations for the extraordinary organization of the second Rhino Forum. I'm going to speak about some vital moments before, during and after the rhinoplasty and at the same time I'd like to express my personal view on this issue. Saddle nose was more fashionable in the 50s and 60s but straight dorsum is nowadays a fashion. Actually there is no exact rule about lower or higher dorsum. That is finally a matter of desire. There are several factors that determine patient selection. The first one is eye contact. Eyes talk so much. The second one is smile. If I cannot elicit a smile, I am very careful with that patient. And finally, conversation helps me to hear patients' considerations and desire, and I always try to understand. It is more than obvious that wise and special patient selection is obliged. It is of utmost importance, especially for the young and non-experienced surgeon to identify these groups of patients and in some cases to avoid surgery. VIP patients have special requests, refuses instructions and are over expectant. I often see patients with unrealistic expectations. Depressed patients are sad and never smile Fortunately, I rarely see indecisive patients. Body dysmorphic disorder is a type of mental disease characterized by preoccupation with imagined defect of a normal appearing person. Be very careful with such patients because only one of them is enough to make your life terrible. This guy came to my office at his 18 and he had a strong desire to possess Jolly's nose. I explained to him that if I create such a nose to him, maybe I'll be his hero. But at the same time, the most uncritical and worst patient for the people. And you know, people always judge the surgeon. Because of that, I refused to operate. Every proper selection is followed by making rhinoplasty design. For that purpose, one must have clear vision and exact pre-op plan. It may be the most important and essential part of rhinoplasty. Surgical approach should be as simple as possible, but adequate enough, enough to enable normal appearance and satisfactory result. And always try to be unique, original, and different from the others in making your nose job. It is the only way to become and stay irreplaceable. And try, try to make safe surgery, at first for the patients and afterwards for yourself. Improvisation is not allowed. What do really patients want? They want benefit, aesthetic, emotional, and functional. Actually, all of them ask for excellence. The patients are getting more and more demanding. This young girl came to my office at her 19 years 
And she told me, doctor, I do not want to see that hump anymore. And my upper lip is not so good. Please do something about that. I did closed approach, removed the hump, and put columellar strut to improve the nasolabial region. And you can see the upper lip is in a better condition. She was satisfied, and I'd like to point out one thing. Nasal dorsum and profile line is the power line. That is a credit card for your operation. Besides the power line of the profile, there is another very important aesthetic detail, and that is eyebrow tip line. This line is broken, but after the operation, there is a beautifully shaped flowing line and final appearance is much better. This girl had a trauma in the childhood with a severe septal deviation and deform deformity of the nasal pyramid. Her breathing was also compromised and I did endonasal surgery, and afterwards, with multiple osteotomies, I put a cartilaginous graft in the region of the left upper lateral cartilage, and the function was much better, and the look also. Helicopter view is always very useful for evaluating crooked and twisted noses, like in this case. And the basal view showed improvement. You see the right nares was much better and almost equal with the left one, so the breathing was practically normal. Patient satisfaction is always determined by objective results, patient expectations, and surgical care. That's very important for the patient to be well informed that the goal of rhinoplasty is not perfection, but improvement. But we have unsatisfied patient. How to manage unsatisfied patients, because some of them could be very aggressive. There are a few steps that can help you and help me in my career. First of all, as a surgeon, you have to be serious and to listen carefully. Afterwards, you should understand patients' complaints and express your concern. Crucial moment in the conversation is do not be defensive. Be humble, but not apologetic. And finally, secondary rhinoplasty is a must for unsatisfied patients. This is one girl operated in another hospital. As, and as you can see, she, had, she is a candidate, she was a candidate for a revision surgery there was a prominent in the nasal dorsum. The prominent was on palpation elastic. It was a part of an upper remnant of the upper lateral cartilage. I removed that, but for the dorsal work, I used endoscope. Zero degree, sometimes 45 degree, because it's very important to be sharp and exact. Profile, she didn't want to have saddle nose because of that I was very, very careful. This is patient operated on a few years ago, another surgeon, and as you can see, she visited the surgeon for reduction rhinoplasty 
but the surgeon was too aggressive and she is almost nose off patient. She is waiting for revision surgery and look at this. This is almost also the patient operated in another country and you can see the result after the aesthetic rhinoplasty. Is rhinoplasty so simple? I often present this slide. Is it a mistake or is it malpractice? Or maybe is it a complication or even bad luck? She was very frustrated and disappointed and she has gone. I've never seen from her from that. So there are at the end four elements that are very useful in determining standard of excellence. Always make special patient selection, respect patient desires but do not promise the world to the patient and always try to achieve non-operated or natural look. We really do love natural look of Belgrade. Thank you so much. And I would like to announce the 12th Balkan Congress of Otorhinolaryngology. The host is North Macedonia, city of Ohrid, near the lake, from 24th to 27th of September 2020. You are all welcome. Thanks for your attention.